Welcome, Vincent. Um, well, we thoroughly enjoyed your film. It was. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Um, tell tell us a little bit about how you discovered. There's a delay. Yeah, sometimes that happens with Skype. Tell us about how you dis how you discovered uh, David Grossman's book. questions from the audience too, but uh, I've read in several interviews that comic books were a large influence on the visual style of your work, which is definitely an apparent thing in this film. What attracted you to this style and how do you think it helps to tell this particular story? Are there questions from the audience? Any hands out there? Don't be scared. Yep. In the middle of it there? Barbara. Why do the characters speak in different languages? Oh. Why do the characters? Are you still there? I'm still here, yeah. Okay. Somehow the video, your video just turned off. There you are. Um, why do the characters speak in, in different yeah, languages? The dedication was gone for a moment. Why do they speak in different languages? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, you know we speak a lot of languages here in Europe. So, uh, when in reality a child would go from Holland to the south of France through Belgium, he would at least have to speak another language to somebody who he meets there. So we at first we thought, well, why not have a little Nazi Rola just to speak Dutch to the boy? But in reality there would be no reason whatsoever for a Lola to know uh, Dutch in <laughs> unfortunately. Which makes us here in Holland and Belgium, we have to learn other languages. So, and I realized when I, when I first went to meet the Rosalinian parents, she's Italian, I'm Belgian, we were, we were in Paris and we were talking English to each other. So, this is just the reality of how it works. And um, we try to maintain this reality throughout the whole process, throughout the whole film. And, I think the funny thing, for me the funny thing was we, we were doing one of the first days of rehearsals with um, Burkhard Klausner who plays Felix and uh, Ivan Rosini and then uh, Thomas who plays Nono, he came in and uh, he, the 13 year old boy, and he started talking in that straight way so it was so natural for him. I guess we were hearing all the best, we grew up with a lot of uh, English and American TVs and songs and all that stuff, and everything is subtitled. Not the songs, of course, but uh, also so we're very used to this English. What, what, t so you mentioned that your great actors, Klausner and, and Rossellini. Talk about working with them. Well, it, 
was uh, great. I mean, uh, as a as an director, it's always a gift to work with very good actors. I mean, and uh, of course, the first day, the night before the first day of shooting, I had to convince myself, okay, don't think of all these people who were standing behind the back of the I mean, if I if I begin to imagine Ingrid Bergman, Roberto Rossellini, and then of course, you know, Martin Scorsese, David Lynch. If I consider think of all these people looking at over my shoulders, I, I would totally freak out. But uh, the good thing about Isabel Rossellini is that she's very kind. She has a great talent to be, put people at ease. Uh, I, I guess people are starstruck with her, her from the get go. So she's very good at making me feel like oh, she's very funny and warm. And then Burkhardt is a uh, is a very serious, you know, German actor. If you look at his uh, filmography, most of the films he's done before this one are very, very serious films. But I noticed on the internet that he has a theater show where he goes around and performs songs with uh, songs of Charlotte Kennet, very, you know, a little bit like this. And uh, I thought, well, he might be a good favorite. And he was just a great actor, a very nice guy. And how about working with No No Thomas, the the actor Thomas Simon? That must have been a lot of a challenge, but also a lot of fun. Yeah, working with children is very um, can be very rewarding. It's it's uh, different from working with a professional actor because you can't really um, no, you're cutting a bit to be so concentrated the whole time. And I know that must have been hard for Burkhardt Klausner as well sometimes, because films would right before a take. You hear a Yeah. Okay, fine, well, I'll just continue. I don't know if you hear me still, but then, films would be joking around right before a before take, and then our action would go completely straight into this concentration. And that works for him, because like, the play is really like playing. Hmm. Are there other questions from the audience? Yeah, right, up front. Where were all the main actors from? Were they all from the Netherlands? Where are all the main actors from? You mean Rossellini and Klausner? Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, the, the young boy. Klausner is, is German. Rossellini is, now lives in New York, but is, you know, from all over the world. <laughs> And I assume that Thomas Simon is, is from the Netherlands. He's Dutch, yes. Yeah. That's right. And all the other, most of the other actors are Dutch. German. Yeah? I have a question. I haven't read the book, but I just wondered, um, in the book, was there that much where, there was so much where um, their imagination was clearly at play? Was that part of the actual book, or was that something that Great question. Um, she's asking about, she hasn't read the book, but she was asking about the imagination. Is that part of the book and or something you uh, devised for the film? I think the way I read the book this is very much part of the book because um, I think it's really about no one's wish to know his mother and uh, the way he wants to know the story and he imagines the story. That means that he has the power to help his family overcome this hard uh, thing that they met with in their lives. I mean, it's for me, it's really very much a film about the healing power of the imagination and why you need the imagination to get by in life. And maybe we strengthen it a little bit in the film in the way that you visualize all, all this imagination. Because in the book, um, it's very easy. They, 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 Felix and Donald travel to all the different places where uh, Sohara has lived. And Felix tells him about the stuff that went um, through. And so either you imagine it while you read it. But in the film, in the I saw that it would be nice to read Donald in a way as the motor of, the, of this of the story. Is that he puts all the pieces together and he imagines how it could have uh, gone. Yeah, I've actually read the book, and I feel that, for me, there's certain scenes in the film that feel completely honest to the book. Like the scene with um, the chocolate factory and the diamond, uh, that, that, that they're watching that, and, and that story that's unfolding, 
I sort of saw that same story in my head as I was reading the book. So I think that's wow. great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very, very good book to read. Nicole, do you have a question? I am curious at whether it's my imagination or whether really when Nona walks into the moon mountain yep, house the at the end, he seems to walk different, like he's kind of an mm. older kid. And did he direct him to sort of be already a little more like now he's 13? More mature. Bigger then? Or shoot it a little bit later? Or was that just my imagination? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a long question. I'm going to condense it. Um, yes, I, can't. I understood. You heard it? I heard, I heard the question, yeah. yeah. Right. Totally her imagination. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, different things are at work there. I mean, first of all, it's in the story that no one has gone through so long now, and he has got to the power now to go on this journey by himself. Yeah. So he has an immature as a character. That's one thing. Um, the second thing is that he had he had matured by that time also as an actor, I think. Because this is I think this is really near the end of the shooting that we went to Spain actually shoot. She thought, that. <laughs> she thought that. And you felt Yeah. And you felt that every, the whole crew was really we were there for uh, five days in this little in this little house in Spain. And uh, I think these are some of Thomas's best scenes, uh, also as an actor. I, I actually saw the film in Berlin last year. It, it was a theater with 1,200 people. It was amazing. It was filled with young kids. And you were there, and Isabella Rossellini was there. Unfortunately, you guys couldn't be here tonight. I know you're prepping another film, and it's so, so gracious of you to even be here in, in virtually. But I'm curious to know what that's like to stand up in front of an audience of 1,200 people for your premiere, and many of them kids. Yeah, well, that was, what can I say, that was fantastic. I mean, it's not so much even going up there after the film, but being there during the film and feeling this, all these people, I mean, if one people watch the film and it goes like, if you, hear, you don't hear it, if 1,200 people <laughs> together, it's like one big body that, that uh, breathes and, and lives through your film, and it's so rewarding because in the making, you, you make all these choices to, all the little details, and I had a feeling in Berlin that people really uh, saw all these little things we put in there. So that was a great, wonderful moment, I must say. Yes? Has it been shown in Europe and the plans for the commercial release of the film? There, there, the film has been commercially released in Europe, in the Belgium and Holland. And I think it will be released in the States uh, as a distributor who has picked it up. So uh, I think it will be released soon. So go on Twitter, everybody. <laughs> yeah, there's a question over here. What is the significance of the bar mitzvah and why was there a Hebrew song? Hebrew lullaby. Uh, well, see, the book is based on uh, the film is based on a book by Grossman. So, in the book, the story is set in Israel, and uh, all the characters are Jewish. And I kind of, I kind of like the fact that it's this bar mitzvah is a very strong rite of passage. I mean, we don't have uh, I'm not Jewish myself, but we don't have anything like that in our culture. Uh, just when you're saying this. <laughs> <laughs> you froze! You froze. Uh, oh. you like that. Since it's in, oh, sorry? You, it just it froze. You, you said you don't have anything in our culture. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, I don't follow you. <laughs> sorry, this is a good but If we comment on it so very quickly, it's difficult in this. I, I think sometimes I really with a very metallic voice. So, um, so I kind of liked all the obvious elements in the story, and uh, yeah, that's why I kept doing it. I love how um, in Tel Aviv, 
you sort of recreate that in, in the south of France. And then, you know, it's interesting that the choices that you made. It's definitely worth reading the book. There's a question over there. Do you know what inspired the author to write the story? Was it based on people you knew, or did you only imagine that? Um, you don't have any idea about what inspired David Grossman. No, I know that when he was uh, about the age normal has, he, he started becoming a, doing these little radio interviews for a radio station uh, in Israel, and it opened his world, I feel. And he did interviews with all kinds of people, and uh, I think this has something to do with it, but I didn't go pry into his personal life trying to find out all the, the juicy details that I had behind the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> Last question, yeah? Was David Grossman at the premiere, and how did he receive the movie? Was David Grossman at the premiere, and how did he receive the movie? He, he was at the premiere. Phil, uh, Phil opened uh, the Dutch Film Fest in, in Utrecht in September last year. And uh, David Grossman and his wife were both present. And uh, we had invited uh, David before that, I think like one, one month before that, to view the film once it was finished. And uh, I think he really liked it. I mean, he, he said, uh, I feel a better person now than for the film. So that was nice. And then after the film, he took a, a DVD with him home and he, he watched it with his wife. And his, his wife uh, had to cry, he told me. And then he said, Then I know it's a good film. Well, Vincent, is there any last word that you want to share with Boston before before you go back into into pre-production for your your musical, which I hear is supposed before to be? Before I go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, so, well, thank you for watching the film, and uh, I hope I will have the opportunity to come to Boston another time, or maybe you guys should come to Antwerp. But we'll just <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Best of luck with your next project. Okay, I'll turn. We're all we're all tied in, but I'll turn it around and show you. Oh. The audio is here, but the video is gone. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> there were the the audience was full. A lot of people left. When we changed, when we moved to this, here, here. <laughs> here they are. <laughs> A very happy Boston audience. Schlaft <laughs> gut. Okay. Good night. <laughs>